Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our series today on the 2022 external exams in Queensland, Australia for general mathematics. We are looking at our first paper and it's the topic of time series. So I've collated all of the multiple choice questions and short answer questions from paper one on the topic of time series. So even if you're not from Queensland or even Australia, if you are studying time series, this is the video for you. It'll give you an exposure to some of the exam questions you could face in the future. Let's get started. So question three on the paper looks at the table showing the minimum and maximum temperatures on the 1st of January every year in Bundaberg, which is a town in Queensland. So we can see by inspecting the table that we've got from 2017 to 2021, we've got five years worth of data. We've got the minimum temperatures, which is the lowest temperature of the day, as well as the maximum temperature, which is just as hot as it got during the day. And it's all measured in degrees Celsius. It's always a good idea when you're looking at a new exam question, just to quickly inspect the data. The question asks, which time series plot best represents the mean temperatures and these are the multiple choice possibilities. Now we need to have a think about what the mean is. We'd recall this from junior mathematics. It's the average. So if I'm looking at two data points, I'm simply adding those together and dividing by two. And we're going to have a data point that's roughly halfway between those two data points between the minimum and the maximum. So we're looking at something about halfway between 20 2 degrees and 31 degrees, for example, for the first data point here, 2017. So we can straight away eliminate D. If we look down here at D, there's only three data points altogether. We actually need five data points, one, two, three, four, five. So we can actually get rid of that as an option. And that's the great thing about multiple choice questions. We can use a process of elimination to quickly hone down on our correct answer. So now let's do a little bit of calculation. We're just going to focus on this first data point because you can see that out of the three remaining choices, we've got one at 27, one at about 31 and a half degrees and one at about 22 and a half degrees. So if we find just simply that first data point, we don't have to do the average for all five years. That first one should hone in on our correct answer. So recall that our formula from our formula sheet looks like this. And um, just to unpack what that means, X with a bar on the top is the average of all of our X values. That funny E symbol means the sum of, and the sum of all the X with the little I's means all of the, your X values. So here are all our values here. Here's our first X value, here's our second X value. And we divide it by N, which is how many there are. And there are two data points here. So if I now add those two together, 22.1 plus 31.8, divide it by two, it's going to be 26.95 or 27 when I round it. Now let's inspect our options. Straight away I can see that for 2017, it sits right on 27, looking like my answer. This one over here, the average is definitely far too high. Um, it's actually plotted this point here, the maximum. And this one down here, it looks like it's plotted just the minimums. So we can eliminate straight away B and C. A is our correct answer for question three. Question five, the table lists the number of books sold per month by an online bookstore. If the simple three point moving average in October is 54, what is the simple three point moving average in May? And we've got four choices. Now, the first thing is we've been given some information about October. Now, let's remember what a three point moving average is. It's the average of three points and the center is the one name. So the three point moving average in October will be this one here for October. It's the center point. So if I wanted to find the three point moving average, I'd simply add 40, 45 and 77 together and divide by three. Now you might be thinking, well, why have they given me that information? It's what we call a distractor. It's actually not really relevant, but it's also a really nice clue that the QCAA has given you. Because if you didn't know how to calculate the three point moving average, you could play around on your calculator. If you found the sum of 40, 45, 77 and divided by three, you'd get the answer of 54. And it's a nice little clue for you about what to do with May. So with May, what we need to do here is we actually need to add together. May is our center. 65, 89 and 65 as well to get our average for those three months. So yes, they've given us information that's not necessary. It's a nice little clue for people who don't know what they're doing. 
Okay, so once again, we're finding an average. So let's add those three together, divide by three, and we're going to get 219 divided by three, which is 73. So now looking at our choices, 69, 73, 74, 89, there's only one possible answer there, and that is B. We had two questions in. Our next question was question 19, and it was worth four marks. So we've moved out of our multiple choice questions now, which are all worth one mark each. We are now into short answer questions. So these are the ones that you need to show working for. Now the graph here shows the amount of rainfall in millimeters for each quarter from 2016 to 2011. So let's have a quick look at the graph. We can see we've got 2016 down the bottom here, all the way up to 2021, that should say. And we've got the four quarters for each period here. The rainfall is in millimeters, we can see that up there. And it looks like we've got some sort of a pattern that it's following. The question says, describe the long-term trend and seasonality of the time series data. So we can see that's worth two marks. So straight up front, describing the trend and describing the seasonality, there are two marks that we're gonna be finding there. So we're giving an answer here in words. So firstly, that long-term trend, what is happening generally over the whole time series? Well, firstly, let's look at those maximums. They are all trending upwards. Let's look at the minimums. They are also trending upwards. So our whole series is generally an increasing series. So we could say the long-term trend is positive. That was our first mark. Another way of also saying that would have been the long-term trend is increasing, the long-term trend is growing. Words that basically describe um, positive trend, increasing, growing. Okay, the next part we wanna focus on is seasonality. So we're looking at, remember seasonality happens within a 12 month period. It's not repeating over multiple years. So for example, if I was looking at something that happens here and then 10 years later, that will be a cycle, but we're looking at seasonality, things that are happening within a 12 month period. So what you would notice here are that there are seasonal troughs in the third quarter of every year. So that's our first thing we can see um, that every year, we um, have a bottom on our trend in the third quarter. And we've got peaks every year in the fourth quarter, peaks being the highest point of rainfall. So that is our second mark. Now you could have written that in a different way, obviously. You could have said that um, the lowest rainfall is quarter three every year, and the highest rainfall is quarter four every year. So there is a seasonality. So you need to use that word seasonality because you're describing seasonality. So I've used the word troughs and peaks, good things to add to your vocabulary there. The next question, part B, a least squares line was fitted to the data with Y representing the amount of rainfall and X representing the number of quarters since the beginning of 2016. For example, X equals five was the first quarter of 2017. Let's find that one there on the graph. So we've got one, two, three, four. X equals five is this next one here. The question gives us the least squared line, so we don't need to find that ourselves. We're given that. And it's Y equals 1.763X plus 156.5. And we are being asked to interpret the Y intercept and the slope of the fitted line. So obviously the y-intercept will be one mark and the slope will be the other mark. So here is where you need to have a good understanding of what an intercept means and what a gradient means. Let's focus on that gradient first. So, uh, sorry, on that intercept first. So the y-intercept, which is normally over here, it's implying that rainfall was 156.5 millimeters in that last quarter of 2015 because the intercept is where time is equal to zero on this particular graph. We're actually not given the intercept here, but remember there is no time zero because there is a year that takes place before 2016. So what's the year before 2016? It's 2015 and the last quarter would be where that graph would be intercepting. So we'd be expecting because we have that peak in that fourth quarter, it would be a peak up here and so basically what we're seeing is that the rainfall was around that area in that particular time. That's our first mark there. So particularly with the time series, understanding that the period where zero and before there actually exists, and it's not negative numbers, it's just that we start the time series in this particular number of years. So understanding where that intercept is, 
doesn't mean in the situation of time series that rainfall will not fall below 156.5. Typically with another bivariate data analysis, if you had an intercept here, it's implying that it's only going to be more than that, that that's going to be the minimum. However, in this case, we know that this is an increasing trend and if we step backwards in time, it's actually going to be lower because that rainfall is increasing over time. So we would expect lower rainfall in 2015. Let's look now at our gradient, 1.763. Now we know gradient is rise over run. So rise is this axis here over run. So what it's saying is that for every quarter of rainfall that we experience, rainfall is going to increase by 1.763 millimetres. And that's what the, the particular least squares line is predicting. So if we go into, for example, 2022 quarter one, which is the next quarter after here, we'll be expecting one more quarter on, we'll have another 1.763 millimetres of rain. And that is our fourth mark for this question. And that was the last time series question on paper one. Did you find this helpful? And if you did, here's some ways you can engage with us further. You could tell us in the comments. Love to hear your feedback. You could tell somebody else, share the video with someone, send the link to them on email or on um, one of your social media pages. You could like and subscribe to the channel as well. We love to see you here and see you returning. And if you've got any questions at all, you can contact us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. You can also engage with us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to see you there too. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.